Hello and welcome to the vlog. Every winter from the start of November to, well, round right about the end of February, maybe the middle of March, the Canal and River Trust undertake a series of winter works across the network. Sometimes this means draining entire lengths of canal. If you saw the Boat Tubers Christmas get together, you'll remember I showed some shots at Braunston where all the locks there had had all the water drained out. And that means that the Canal and River Trust will be replacing lock gates and generally doing maintenance on the canals. But where on earth do you get a new lock gate if the old one is worn out? Well, I'll tell you where. This workshop. This is the Canal and River Trust site at Bilston in the West Midlands. It's one of two that make and refurbish lock gates. This is woodworking on a substantial scale, but using maybe surprisingly low-tech, tried and tested old school methods. We do all of our lock gates in, in oak and uh, there is a, quite a lot of handwork, uh, mostly handwork really. The only machinery is mortise and tenon. Most of it is done by circular saws and, and other power tools and also the old fashioned chisel. It's as, as old as can be in some cases, but there, there is some new technology that we do use, but mostly it's old traditional woodworking techniques. The process starts when huge chunks of timber are brought into the workshop and fed through a massive mechanical planer which skims the edge off the wood to make it square and true and bring it to a particular size. The planks are so heavy they need to be moved by an overhead crane and are lifted to a working area alongside where a specific individual carpenter will then take charge of a gate's entire production. This is no line where the product passes from one person to the next. Instead, the carpenter who starts a gate will see it through to the finish. It's nice to see a job started and finished by the same person. Uh, it, it gives me a lot of pride in my work and uh, I take a lot of care and, uh, and sometimes I'll put my name on the gate. So it's, it is satisfying because uh, you can get a lot of places there'll be you'll do one little section of one little product of one big product and uh, so you can't really put your name on the whole thing whereas this you can put your name on the whole thing it takes more than just one lump of wood to make a gate of course and being solid oak each gate can typically weigh anywhere between one and four tons another crane is used to shift the planed timber so that it's lined up ready for working which will ultimately involve several of these beams coming together. In this example, the gate is going to have a paddle installed at the bottom, which would let water into or out of the lock. In other words, a large hole needs to be cut into the timber. The first cuts are done with a powered circular saw. Then a hand saw is used to finish off. Finally, a bit of brute force separates the unwanted block of wood from the main beam, although it doesn't always want to detach and a little more hard graft is called for. That's the end result. And whilst it might not look like a gate paddle, once you've used the crane to move the other beams into place, suddenly it looks a bit more like part of a lock gate and all makes more sense. We make around 100 gates a year on average per workshop. There are two workshops in the country, we're one of those. Uh, so altogether for the Canal and River Trust, uh, around 200 gates a year on average. 
and it is going up year by year at the moment. That's new gates, yes. Any additional repair work is normally an emergency, so that, that gets added on additional to our works program. There's more to a gate than just those square beams, though. These beautifully rounded lengths will become the vertical pivots on which the lock gates hinge. You'll notice there are holes drilled into this beam. That's because an assortment of metalwork is bolted into and through each gate, as you'll see. Each assembly has a box of bits made up specifically for it, marked with the location of that specific gate, and the craftsman will use this when putting all the pieces together. Some are standardised in certain ways, like some have their own certain type for different areas of the, the UK, um, but mostly they're all different shapes and sizes, just the same um, sort of ironmongery, I suppose you'd call it. All the specifications in size, uh, how tall the gate is, how wide the gate is, uh, and uh, how much ironmongery and components get added, that varies quite a lot. The metalwork is also done in-house. There's a separate section of the workshop which houses metalworking tools such as lathes and drills. Everything from bolts upwards can be constructed here and trimmed with a precision that belies the giant size of the end product. Here's one that's starting to look a little more like a lock gate as we know it. Notice the huge beams lying lengthways and the metalwork strapped around the bottom to hold it in shape. We have different things for strength, uh, especially because the oak tends to split. We put things like uh, metal straps, the metal straps that go around the outside of the timber to hold it all together. And there are some protective things to stop the bolts damaging the, the lock gate as much. Uh, things that can be refitted if damaged, replaced and a lot of that does go on before the gate is actually assembled and after assembling then we start fitting things like the boards uh, which are on the one side of the gate and uh, any safety uh, metal fendering that it does have. The holes now have metal poles bolted through them pulling the whole construction together but believe it or not simple glue is also a key part of the project with joints liberally slathered in it to make a solid bond. These planks will now be added across the empty space on that gate to act as the actual block to the water getting through. And these are the paddles themselves. This is what you're actually lifting or lowering when you crank a windlass on a lock. Outside in the rain, a completed gate is waiting to be taken for installation at a lock, and we can see the paddles in action, albeit with manpower where the ratchet and windlass would normally be. Paddle down, and the water stays put. Paddle open, and the water can flow. Time for this gate to be on its way. Taken on a truck now. Uh, we used to take them out by boat, but obviously the uh, road is a lot easier, a lot cheaper, a lot faster. Uh, there is an odd one every, say, three years that, where the certain place might be that isolated that they'll want the gate transported by boat, or just for the last, say, a couple of miles towards the lock chamber, they'll trans transfer it by boat. Yeah. And here's how we see gates usually, of course. Next time you're going through, as well as the lock gate date plate, which is usually obvious, there may be something else to look out for too. I do put my name on the gates, so if you do see Wayne Lees on the gates, uh, you'll know that it's been made at Bradley Workshop by me, myself, from start to finish. I can put it in various places. Sometimes it's a little more hidden than others, but it all depends on how easy it is for me to get that name on the gate without it being too obvious and anywhere that might get damaged. Do they all do that? No. Yeah, yeah, just me. <laughs> well, I hope you found that interesting. Any questions, drop them down below. As usual, I will do my best to answer them. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.